Hello and welcome to We Poets. My name is Sally Baker and I'm the host of We Poets. We Poets is a poetry show for boys and girls between the ages of 6 and 13. So if you would like to be on the program, please have your parents or your school teacher call me. I'm always looking for young people to come and be on the program. We're a nonprofit organization, so we need contributions. If you would like to sponsor us, please call me at the number which appears on the screen so that we can continue to bring you new shows of We Poets. We've been doing We Poets for 32 years. Now we're going on our 33rd year, so we need sponsors. Tonight our topic is recycling. We have a wonderful guest. She is an artist and she specializes in stained glass and she's brought some wonderful things that she's going to demonstrate to the children and we're going to hear all about an exhibit that she has currently showing. So without further ado, here's our first poet. Hello young lady. Hello. How are you tonight? Good. Good. Could you look there at camera three and tell us your name and how old you are and what grade you're in? Hello, my name is Asia and I am in sixth grade and I'm 11. Good. What do you like best about school? Um, I like the technology class that we have there. Good. What takes place in your technology class? We mainly do coding. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult to learn? Not very. Not very? And you use the computer a lot? Mm, yes. How long have you been using the computer? <laughs> um, as long as I've known how to. Good for you. And when you graduate from high school or college, what career do you think you'd like to pursue? Um, definitely be an artist. An artist. What kind of artwork do you like to do? I like to mainly do sketching. Good, good. And you brought something here, a sketch of what? A cat. A cat. Well, we're going to read your poem first and then you can hold your sketch up and tell us all about it. So okay. what's the name of your poem? It's called Recycle Me. Okay. Be our guest, please. Recycle me. Reuse me. Don't lose me. Love me. Care for me. Don't trample me. And when you're through, put me in the right bin, why don't you? Great, let's clap, wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> very nice, very nice. Now tell me, what do you do at home and at school to recycle? Well, at home, I usually throw away my milk cartons and my, <clears throat> my uh, tin cans. Mm -hmm. And at school, what do you do to recycle? I usually throw away my tin cans there and my plastic bags that I bring. Good, good. And you say dad takes the garbage out uh, for the garbage man or? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's his job, huh? <laughs> yes. yes. What kind of work does dad do? Um, well, he's on workers comp right now, but he's thinking about going back to work soon. Good, good, good. Now tell us about what you want to do or what you did this summer that was fun. Well, I went to my grandma's like I always do. Where's grandma live? In Nevada. Ooh, the whole family drove to see her? Yes. And what did you do with Grandma? Um, we mainly take swimming classes and go to parks. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, if we're not going to out, then we usually stay home and watch TV. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite TV programs? Um, mainly cartoons and uh, silly movies. Silly movies, huh? Well, did you go anywhere else besides Nevada? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh huh. In the past, have you gone anywhere else that was different? Uh, out of state? Uh, no, but I have been to Los Angeles before. What did you do in Los Angeles? Uh, mainly just looked around, see what they had, mm -hmm. stores. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, anything else you'd like to tell us about you or your classmates, your friends? Mm, I don't think so. I think I've said anything. Okay, everything. and this is your first time on TV? Yes. You did a wonderful job. Very yeah. good. I'm very proud of you. All your classmates are going to be so proud of you. And your principal came tonight to watch you too? Yes. Tell me, what's your principal's name? Uh, Mr. Trumbly. Good. And he's had a lot of the students from his school come and be on my program. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yes. And even he was on my program before, too. Oh. Yes. Now, before you leave, why don't you hold your drawing up here of the cat so camera three here can take a picture of it. And tell us about this kitty cat. Well, I usually like to draw cats. Um, uh, they usually have a lot of emotion, if I do say so myself, and I usually like to put them in clothing, like sweaters or jackets. Oh, and what, is this, this one's got on a sweater? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you say you don't have a cat, but you'd like to have one. Yes. You have a dog, though? Yes. Tell us about that dog. His name is Jack, and he's a mix between a German Shepherd and a... 
Rottweiler, I believe. Uh-huh. And you have to take care of him? Mm, yes, I usually uh, go outside and check his water once and every now and again. Good. Do you have to give him a bath? Not really, but sometimes we, we will. Uh-huh. Good. Well, if there's nothing else you want to tell us about you, we're going to uh, take a little break and then have our guests come on. And you're going to come on and she's going to show you some things about stained glass and other artwork that she's done, okay? Ooh, okay. Okay. Let's clap for her. Didn't she do a wonderful job? <laughs> Welcome back to the second half of We Poets. I'm Sally Baker, the host. I would now like to introduce you to my special guest for today. today. Her name is Tomei Madsen. She's an artist and she's taught art at several schools. She's gonna tell us all about where she's taught art. And we're talking about recycling. And she's going to show Asia and I how she recycles from potato chip, potato chip bags after we're ready to throw them away. That's going to be interesting. And then at the end, she's going to tell us all about a stained glass exhibit that she's exhibiting at a store here in Berkeley. So here we go with our first question. Hi, Miss Madsen. Good evening. How are you tonight? Very well, Miss Baker. Good. Um, I just met this young lady named Asia. Yes, isn't Hello. she a nice young lady? Yes. Yes. Now. I was very taken with your uh, talk and your poem in the earlier session. Good. Now, what are you going to teach us that uh, Asia can start uh, working on and then you and I can go on talking? Well, if you remember in the first segment, Asia mentioned that she liked to draw and apparently she likes to draw things out of her head. Is that right? Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, unlike you, I don't have any pets. I have a stuffed, uh, it's not even a stuffed, I have a ceramic dog. Very easy to take care of. <laughs> So I have, um, before you throw your potato chip bags away, and do you want to show people what they look like inside and out? Hold it if up to camera so, three there. So kind as to do that. Uh huh. That's the outside. And then that's the inside, right? Okay. Right. And as I was explaining to Asia, these are made of a, a very interesting plastic laminated to an aluminum. And I was telling her this is my favorite type of potato chips. Like a lot of people, I have a snack problem, or I shouldn't call it a problem, but I, I like to snack. And so this is my go-to snack, uh, potato chips. Cooked in olive oil, sometimes I can find avocado oil or I think um, coconut oil are supposed to be the better oils for us. So I try to really be good about looking for the right type of oil. Um, so we're gonna do a project basically on or with these sheets that I have pre-cut so they're nice and even, because when you take a bag apart, it, not, it doesn't necessarily come out as even as this. And because we're, Ms. Baker is going to interview me while Asia is going to attempt to draw a cat or something on one of these sheets, uh, that will make it easy for her to be busy while I'm answering questions that Ms. Baker is going to pose to me. So I have explained to Asia that this is called a China marker. It, it is a, a pretty thick piece of, I'm not even sure what, that makes a nice white mark that will stay very well on the metal, on this metallic aluminum surface. And I can show you one that I had drawn earlier so she can get an idea of what can come out of the, her drawing, the result of what she can do, and hopefully her dad or her, the principal can spray shellac on top of it so it can stay on the aluminum and not rub off. So that's the idea for her first project. There are other examples of things that she could do if we have time. Uh, the, because this is a plastic, the easiest way to keep it together is with staples. So I've brought a stapler and a staple remover in case you put a staple someplace you didn't intend, you can take it off, take it out. Um, you can also, if you were doing this at home, because the staple makes tiny holes, you could find thread and a needle and thread something through the holes if you wanted to. Or we also have a hole punch, so you can hole punch holes in it and we have this as a result. We have a kind of collapsed or gathered piece 
of the potato chip bag with a smaller, skinnier piece of the bag cut as if it was a piece of fabric and run it through the holes and then tie it off. And because this is a slippery, non-porous product, you know what porous means? Um, no, actually I don't. If, if something could be, if you could take paint and pour it through, or if I could put, put paint on this and it could go through some kind of way, it would be considered porous because I'm pouring it through, I'm pouring it on here, but it may come out and bleed out on the other side. Uh -huh. Like your shirt, if you got paint on your shirt, do you think it'll show up on the other side? No. Really? If you put paint on this, you don't think it'll show on the other side? Mm -hmm. Well, it will, because this is porous. When you wash your clothes, that's one of the things. You can wash clothes that are porous. You couldn't wash anything that isn't. I could, you think you could wash this? Mm, yes. You can wash the surface off, but do you think you could put this in a washing machine? No. <laughs> exactly. So that's the difference between something porous and not porous, or what they call non-porous. So because this is non-porous, meaning it's also slippery. When you make your knots in this, as I did with this, you'll notice that it's probably hard to see on the camera, but there are tiny little knots in here. And the knots need to be done twice just to make sure the knot doesn't slip apart. Okay, so when we get to that stage, I'll show you that. So why don't you go ahead and have fun sketching with this pencil, and I will talk to Ms. Baker. Okay, we'll see what your finished project is at the yeah. end. All right, be, now. Be comfortable with whatever you sketch. We're, this is not a contest or uh, anything <laughs> to make you feel ill at ease. You don't have okay. to get a grade. This is just for fun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, now, Ms. Madsen, yes. my next question. Why is one of your creative uh, ideas recycling potato chip bags? Because I have so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have been storing up potato chip bags for approximately two to three years. So I have quite a bit of, of potato chip bags. I was hard pressed to figure out what I could do with them and I really wanted to have young people work with it or them because I'm quite sure a lot of young people eat potato chips. Uh, yes, quite a few. Um, aside from their parents or guardians or whomever, adults that they would uh, really enjoy trying to figure out something that was useful perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, with the drawing that Asia's doing, when she's done and someone fixes it so that it can stay put, mm -hmm. it's easy enough to have a mat put on this and then put it in a frame. How nice. Yes, and it's a, it's a very nice surface. So, you know, I think that the fact that it's shiny, well, for kids, I think it, in particular, they would enjoy that. Good. Now, can you tell us some of the places that you've taught children artwork? You are fast. Look at this. Oh, she's done already? She's done already. Hold that up so, there to camera can three. You Let's see. see. This? <gasps> she did this so quickly. Don't oh. was that, like two minutes, five minutes? Isn't that, that great? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Dad's going to have to mat that. You could take it to school and show it to your classmates. It's and maybe you can teach it in your classroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cat with hearts. Isn't that wonderful? Maybe she'd does like this to do cat have a, Does this cat have a name? Uh, no, but no. it really is just a cat holding a potato. <laughs> oh, Dude, I missed that. It's holding a potato. Wow. Oh, it sure is. And then it Did can you be made that? into French fries. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, maybe, why don't we have her do another one while you and I continue sure. to talk? Sure, unless you one. want to put um, some kind of environment around the cat. Sure. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. Are. That's she great. Fast? I know. Let's see now. Uh, do you think this approach will be replicated? I would hope so. Asia is certainly doing a good job of it. Yes. Um, I think that particularly for the sketch sketchers in the group, uh, people who really love to do drawing, mm -hmm. I think that they would. Wow. Yes, and just imagine how many bags would not have to be in the landfill. That's right, yes. that's right. Yes. What else do you recycle at home in your studio? Well, I recycle uh, cardboard from uh, cereal boxes because I still eat some cereal, uh -huh. preferably without sugar. Uh -huh. And my latest go-to recycling is doing working with glass. Uh -huh. And I very much like, oops, I'm uh -oh. so sorry. <laughs> that's all right, we'll just pull the table the, back. Mess up the surface for the artist. Uh -huh. Tell us about your glass uh, project. So I uh, use either broken clear glass, window glass, what's called float glass, or I have a, uh, many times used beer bottle, brown bottle, green bottle, wine bottles, salad dressing bottles. So it runs the gamut. 
Wow. I have neighbors who've given me bottles. I have friends who've given me bottles. So I don't need any more bottles at the moment. <laughs> Please don't send any bottles don't to me. Don't send any more bottles. No, no more now, bottles. Did you want to talk about this glass piece now or later? Oh, certainly. I can okay. talk about that. This is one of your glass yeah, we pieces. Can, so this is an example of what can be happening. It's called cold working glass. When you put glass in a kiln, there is some control over what you will have as your result, but not necessarily. And this is made up of a lot of smaller pieces and then they, they became what's called vitreous or almost like maple syrup, but not quite. And the whole glass runs into itself and becomes one piece. So this one, if it were a real close up, you might be able to see the bubbles and all kinds of strange looking things in here that look like outer space. And then this hole, well actually there are two holes, they are natural, naturally forming in this glass. It was not anything that I like drilled a hole or something. Um, so it rests pretty well on a table so it can be used as a, a platter to put food on. Uh, obviously not so small it would fall through the hole. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Now tell us about your exhibit where people can go. My exhibit is located at Stained Glass Garden, which is located at 1800 4th Street, which is a very popular street in Berkeley. And there are a lot of different restaurants. It's right next door to Sur La Table that a lot of people get their houseware, their dishware, I should say, and anything that goes in the kitchen, pretty much. And it's a wonderful place to, if you don't, if you don't have interest in glass, you can certainly go there and buy trinkets, like rings and pins and bracelets and all kinds of really wonderful, beautiful things since we're coming up on the holidays. And the other thing when you go there is that you can pick up, for those who actually work in glass, you can pick up things to make glass items. Mm -hmm. And what hours is the exhibit? Take the place exhibit, in how many days? The exhibit is going to run until February 28th, and the stained glass garden hours are 10.30 to 5, Monday through Saturday. And Sunday, it's 11 to 4.30. Mm -hmm. So it's still, you still have time to go see it if you have interest in seeing what I'm doing, which is actually a lot of heads. I do a lot of pieces that it looks like I went a little bit crazy and made a lot of pieces that are puzzle pieces and then glued them together. And the puzzle, I refer to puzzle pieces because they're small pieces, but they're of glass and they've been silicon together and made to look like the profile of a head, of someone's head. So some face right, some face left. Um, there's one that is full face. And then there is one stained glass piece in the exhibit and one fuller piece that hangs on the wall. Well, two, two wall pieces. Great. And they're all made of recycled glass, right? Yes. 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 Now, let's come back here to Asia. Let's see what Asia has done. What have you done, Asia? I have basically put it in the cat in a living room setting with another creature and some p p <clears throat> some fries. Oh, some French fries. <laughs> so the cat's going to eat the fries or the other creature? Well, it, um, what I put is it looks like the, the other creature, which is a mouse, is trying to get the fries. Oh, oh so let's hold oh, that up. Oh, that's sweet. Let's hold that up to camera three. Hold it up, one of you. That is so sweet. Isn't that wonderful? You're a great artist. Yes, you are. And she's nine Very years imaginative. old. Very imaginative. 11 years old, and she's got this talent already. Very imaginative. Isn't that great? She'll have to take some of your classes. Yeah, look at this. I, th I think she she's way beyond taking my class. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. This is the, uh, hold it up again, please. This is the mouse, if, it, if people can see it. Oh, yes, this is the look mouse. at that tail on that mouse. And the french fries. Isn't that sweet? Is this a drink? What is that? Ketchup. Ketchup. Oh, ketchup, of course. <laughs> Do you know I put mustard on my fries? Mustard? Ooh. I don't like ketchup. Ooh. So there's, there's a, a container of ketchup, and then the hearts are still there, and the cat is no longer sleeping. It's munching on a potato. Isn't that something? And is this a chair? What is this? Yes, that is a chair. Okay, so look, we've got a chair, Look a over here, there's a garbage can, right? Oh, that is That's actually a, a table. Yeah, oh, a table. Oh, yeah. okay. And right. the window? Look at the window. And there's an art 
piece hanging up, hanging right? on the wall. On the wall. <gasps> nice living room. Isn't that great? Very you nice. You are a wonderful artist. Yes. Wow. The artist who recognizes it's important to have <laughs> art in the room. Yes. Now, is there anything else you'd like to teach her here? Well, we had this, uh, the you. other things I was showing her because of this whole thing of needing to use staples is I was showing her examples of things I had previously done. And so there's, this is just strips that are one inch wide. I think it's about 10 inches. Well, it's about 10 inches long um, because potato bags, you can see they're pretty, they can get pretty long. Well, I, because I'm a big person, I get big bags. <laughs> so, um, th so that's one thing. Then I showed her, this would be the front. This is like an ornament Oh, you can hang. That you can either hang on something uh -huh. or you can actually present it to someone. Oh, one take hold so of that. So that's yours. You could take that and give that to mom when you get home. Yes. Yes. So wow. I was going to show her. I don't know if we still have time. I could kind of I think we quick. have time. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So there are pre-cut strips in the interest of time. Let her make something yes. quickly. She's quick. <laughs> yes, she is. So here's two that are Perfect length, they're the same length. So let's move, let's protect this. Mm -hmm. You take this home. And let's do this. And, and one thing, when, when you start doing an art project, you should always have some kind of covering for your surface, table or something. I mean, it's nice they have this wonderful plastic red tablecloth on here, but if you were at home, you would find either a piece of paper, which is easy enough, an old piece of newspaper, and cover up your, your parents' table so you don't, they don't come back at you and say, what is this on the table? We can't get it off. Okay, so that's a good thing to start off with. This, you're going to, now what did I wind up saying? It was this way, it was this way. Well, let's just do both. So this is a front and this is a front. You're going to staple this together. So do that, please. Line them up and staple them together. You can move the stapler. It doesn't have to stay where it is. And you just, just want to along. put... We yes. gotta move along here. Oh, okay. Well, if she doesn't, if well, that's she all right. Finish, we can finish can afterwards. Finish. But yes, exactly. We'll go ahead. I think we have five minutes. Okay. Uh huh. It might be better if you leave the stapler on the on, on the, the table. table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then you go to do the other end. Well, actually, let's do this first. Do this. We're gonna flip this over, and staple it one more time. So now I know I did it the opposite way because <laughs> the foil's not on the outside anymore. <laughs> Boy, she's a quick learner. Okay. A wonderful artist. Then we're going to do the exact same thing over here. Staple this. And when you turn it, just make sure they're, they're, they go the same way. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Then one more time, we're going to flip this like this. Make sure it's like it's supposed to be. Okay. Increase that so it's there. Try to miss the, where the staple is and just put it close to it. Okay. So, then we have a, a circular piece. So when I did the, now I'm going to have to remember what I did. So when I did that piece to make the heart, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I took the bottom. Let's see, did I take the bottom? I had to make a heart. This one's smaller, so I couldn't have been that. Well, let's just pretend. You so know we what? Let's, along, so we... Okay. Um, because, oh, what did I do? I had a longer piece. Well, you could do it afterwards, after we finish. You can... Well, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, that gives you an idea of one way that you can do this. And it is supposed to be so that the outside doesn't have anything poking necessarily. That's why we did this twice. And so it's stronger and stays together better. So that's one thing. And then I was showing you this, where you can punch holes and then have a very thin piece that you would cut off, thread it through each hole, and then tie it off twice so it doesn't slip out of itself. And then you, this is a little bit too tight, but that gives you another idea. If you want this to be longer, you would just do this, leave one end open, and just staple one, two, three pieces together, and you'd wind up with a much longer piece, which I did have something somewhere here. Um, there's also, if you took a lot of skinny pieces and put them together, this is knotted, 
So then you have this kind of affair. It's t I t this is seven pieces, and then I twist it around my finger and put a knot in it and then put another knot in it to make sure this doesn't come undone. So then you have like a little tassel. Now, before we end, yes. what do you think about when you're making all these things to teach children? I think about how wonderful it would be if the youth would remember that they're responsible for continuing the whole thing of keeping our earth in a better place. Right. Uh, not to just throw things away just because you can, mm -hmm. uh, because there are some wonderful things that you can do with these. If you've made something and said, uh, you know, this is too simple, simple for you, you could give this to somebody else who might actually enjoy it. You know, someone who's not an artist. And they would say, oh, wow, look at this. What is this? And you could just make up a story to go with it. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are lots of different things when I'm creating my art, especially the glass art. And I think about that's less things that are going to be in the landfill. Um, there's, there's obviously something that people can use that now for. So it's great to just keep that in mind. No. Okay, we have one minute left, so I want to thank oh, both of you for coming. Job. You did a wonderful job, and I want you to go to school tomorrow and tell your classmates about We Poets, and I'd love to have a lot of them come on and read their poems and bring artwork they've created. And Tomei, quickly, could you tell us where else you've taught children art projects? Uh, Prescott Joseph Center for Community Enhancement is a facility in West Oakland. They pretty much deal with a lot of health issues that people experience. So that's a good source. I did a summer stint there for six weeks teaching youth your age and older. Actually, a couple of youth who were younger than you because I had beautiful twins who were six years old. Oh. Just incredible. I mean, one was just phenomenal in creating art. Um, also a Studio One Art Center for the City of Oakland and the Malanga Center, which is also part of the City of Oakland Parks and Rec Facility. Okay, well, I'm afraid we're out of time, but I want to thank both of you. Both thank did a you. wonderful job. Thank and you. I'd like to have you come back again when oh, we're going to do recycling. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Uh -huh. You too. And without saying uh, any more, thank you. we're out of time. I want to thank our audience for watching. And so without further ado, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. Let's all goodbye. wave goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> goodbye. Thank you.